uh, just mentioned, I'll be talking about uh, passing your English language skills to your children today. And before I continue, I would like to uh, divert your attention to this uh, video of uh, my children conversing freely in, in three languages. It's, it's inside our ear. It's, it's inside our ear. Do you remember? But, but that still doesn't know about that. Russian? Uh, no, you wait said in Russian, now English. Actually, English, I didn't even say it's still. In English? I love my dear mommy. I, I love my dear mommy. I love funny. <laughs> I love my dear mommy. I love her very much. And do you love your mommy? Of course, and very much. I don't need to do what I do like this. Look. Can <laughs> you tell me about chess game? Do you know how to play chess? No, he doesn't. A little bit, she knows. I know. Yeah. Пешка идет вперед. Ага. А вот так криво. По диагональному. Can I say please? Ну, сейчас она не идет криво. Да по диагональному. Все по диагональному. Можно и говорить и криво, и по диагонали. И кто самая сильная фигура? Это пешка и король. Пешка и ферзь. Не король только одну летку больше. Это пешка и ферзь, потому что, потому что пеш, когда пешка идет сам в концу, потом пешка может стать любой фигурой, который сел. Можно даже ферзю и, и, фер, и ферзь. Как ты думаешь, кто такой хороший человек? Хороший человек это когда человек помогает семье и, и никого не бьет и плохие слова не говорит. Sun and planet? No, mm -hmm. star. That's right. But there's like those stars that are bigger than the sun. TV? What, what are your favorite animals? I know lots of all about space. And also... And cat and the rabbit. And, and also, and also at space, and when the cat when stars get old, they become a black hole. What's oh, your favorite right. game? Hmm? Monopoly. Monopoly is your favorite game? Mine, oh. mine is too. Really? So each year, potentially, 11,000 students graduate from universities with excellent English language skills. And here's the, uh, the calculation I did. About 22 universities where English is the main language of instruction and at least 500 of them graduating every year. So that's only factual math. And we know that 
ch children around uh, or um, students in, in, in schools, in high schools, and uh, other exchange programs, they are uh, trying to help youth to improve their English language skills. Those, are, those who are not in universities also have English language skills which are excellent and potentially, just as I did, you could also transfer, pass your English language skills to your children. So the outline of my talk is, I'll be talking about how it's not an easy journey and there are barriers, but also, from my experience again, it is possible to overcome those barriers. And at the end, I'll touch upon the science behind uh, learning the second or third language and what we know so far. So barriers to passing. So what do you think those barriers are? Could you please give me some shout outs and, and say what you think those barriers could be? Environment. 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 You mean the in what sense? Around you. Society or? Community. There is a societal uh, pressure. I'll talk about that. Yes. What else? Patience. Patience. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. True. Anything else? Limited time. Limited exactly. Limited exposure. All of those. You're absolutely right. And I try to put them all in, uh, in the listing. And here's what I came up with. It's the uh, combination of uh, when there's lack of confidence, information on how to do it, and resources, as you mentioned, time, and books that I found uh, uh, to be, and I knew that it would be the biggest, one of the biggest challenges uh, to find books in, in English for children. And partner, family support, and as you mentioned, uh, societal, uh, environmental, uh, other factors as well, like around you, what surrounds you. So before I, I move on, I would like to, uh, to talk about why I wanted them to learn English. And we all know that it's a global language, uh, but also, in addition to that, there are many benefits. Children learn faster and easier. They, uh, learning a second language uh, boosts their problem solving, critical thinking, listening skills, in addition to improving memory, concentration, and the ability to uh, multitask. And also it enhances their creativity, mental flexibility. There's also research that it uh, uh, could prevent or delay Alzheimer's as well. It, in turn, in return, it enhances their future career opportunities as, as well and helps them connect with other cultures and building tolerance towards other cultures. So we talked about barriers and how you could overcome them. Here, I present them as, as a list, confidence, information on how to do it, the resources and the support. But for me, in my experience, it was a cyclical, uh, cyclical uh, duration. It was a, a cyclical experience where I would be coming back to every barrier um, every time. And I still do. So you may have a confidence at one time, but you may find out yourself out of resources. Uh, or uh, you may have a full support of your partner and, and family, but uh, you may not have updated yourself enough on information how to do it. So it has to be constant. It has to be recurring that you always uh, go back to these. Again, at least in my experience. And here are some, uh, in my experience again, how, what kind of steps I took to overcome those barriers. I created a book drive. You can see this blog post I created on a free uh, uh, well, blog post creation website. It's from 2016. And I created a book drive. I called anyone I knew and I did not know to contribute to uh, our library of English books for children. And uh, it did not go viral, but it helped. And I am eternally thankful to everyone who contributed. It was people I knew, people I never knew, my students, my former students, my colleagues, former colleagues. And it was amazing. And, and I thank them from the bottom of my heart. This is what it looked like when I created this book drive, the Excel file I just uh, shared with uh, Google Doc. I put our address there and anyone 
could, I listed the books that I, uh, that, that I thought were best according to their ages, and uh, anyone could ship them to our address. And it happened. And uh, as of now, we have over 100 quality children's books in English. Thank you very much. And it's growing. And uh, other resources. Of course, YouTube is great. There are many, many, many uh, children's shows, and PBS is, uh, uh, is a great channel as well. Uh, websites. Again, as they grow, I, I had to uh, look for other resources. So, because everything is age, should be age appropriate. When they were uh, zero or, or one, two, three years old, I would use different ones when, uh, than I am using right now. So, uh, these are all the websites. In addition to the websites, I mentioned at the very end, online discussion boards, where mothers like me, parents, share their experience of how they did it. And it happens globally. People move from their countries and they are trying to keep their native languages. And uh, they were actually my, my, my main sources of information. So for me, I pretended I was a native English speaker and I was trying to keep English uh, and pass that to my children. So uh, on the side, there was also uh, uh, exposure, as uh, you mentioned, to trying to uh, expose them to as many English-speaking communities as possible. So, science says, and it's proven, children learn through play. At the very beginning, I, uh, I was determined, I had confidence, I had to do it. Uh, but um, I knew that I would not, I should not be forcing children, and it should always be through play. And I was lucky that my children were interested and they uh, carried on with it. And what we know about brain is uh, still very limited. Brain grows starting before birth and continuing into early childhood. Although the brain continues to form and, and change, the first eight years can build a foundation for future learning, health, and life success. So how well a brain developed, though, depends on many factors. Uh, in addition to genes, such as uh, proper nutrition, starting in pregnancy, and exposure to uh, toxins or infections also uh, uh, can, can be harmful for brain development, we know that, and the child's experiences with people and the world. So how the brain grows is strongly affected by the child's experiences with other people and the world. Children grow and learn best in a safe environment where they are protected from neglect and from extreme or chronic stress with plenty of opportunities to play, play and explore. So it's the combination of all these factors. There's no uh, magic pill, uh, as I would put it in other words. And again, I, I put that uh, children learn through play uh, on purpose. I cannot emphasize enough on this, uh, that children must learn through play and it should be occurring uh, naturally. And also studying, to, uh, contrary to the uh, common belief, studying a foreign language improves a child's understanding of his own native language. So, uh, uh, as, as one of you mentioned, uh, uh, a lot of times I would get, I still get that feedback from their teachers saying, uh, um, and also uh, sometimes from the extended family as well, that it's uh, uh, limiting them, that it's uh, putting their native language at risk. But science proves otherwise, that it's not necessarily true. Usually when a child struggles with the, uh, any language, and it could be their native language, there, there, is, uh, there are other underlying uh, uh, underlying reasons for that. And not everything is known about the relationship between the anatomy or biology of the brain and behavior. So if you decide to go, to, to go through, this, through this experience, the experience of teaching your child, passing your English language skills to you, your child will not be 100% predictable. So again, we're all different and brain reacts differently and our behaviors uh, are are different. And again, as, as I mentioned earlier, it depends on many other factors as well. So this is true for any life and learning experience 
And in other words, there's no uh, one-size-fits-all uh, approach or recipe. So in my experience, from zero to two years, um, I conversed only in Uzbek. The exposure was only uh, into Uzbek-speaking environment. And starting from age two, I added English, while my husband and all other relatives continued speaking Uzbek. And starting from three years old, we added Russian. And both of my children went to preschool, where Russian is the uh, main language of instruction. And my son goes to uh, first grade, uh, where again, Russian is the main language of instruction. So three um, main elements, conversation and uh, book reading every day uh, at bedtime, and children's shows. Uh, in English videos on YouTube. Also, um, there was one of one tip that I learned early on that said uh, it's uh, it's it's easier for a child if uh, one language comes from one parent or one person. So it's it's easier for them to identify that person with that language and to switch easily. So that's what we did, and my husband. Uh, speaks only Uzbek and I only speak uh, English. So they could be st standing in the middle of us and asking a question in English from me and I would answer and they immediately turn back to their daddy and, and they speak in Uzbek. So that helped. And science behind it all is to have fun. As I mentioned, it, it, it opens so many opportunities and uh, the the reason why we're here today is because of my children, because of this experience. And uh, again, I said, we met so many wonderful people and we even rented our small room through Airbnb so they would, we would have guests, uh, hoping that we would have guests from English speaking countries and uh, they were exposed to it uh, uh, with that as well. So it, it's all fun. And despite, I mean, it, in addition to all the scientific uh, reasons and the benefits I mentioned, I'll give you some obvious ones. Original research in any subject area is best and most successful in English. And also, uh, what I just mentioned, having been exposed to English, my children and I, we have had an experience, amazing experience of meeting new people and uh, going through new experiences. And not always as, as an adult, one has time to learn a new skill, and there are so many more skills and languages to learn. I, when, whenever we uh, ride a cab, the drivers are all, almost always interested, and they say, oh, I wish I started earlier, and, or I want to uh, learn it too. And I always encourage them and say, well, it's never too late. Uh, I know for a fact people uh, receiving their master's degrees when they're 80 years old, it's never too late. But uh, usually, as a grown-up, you have to uh, care for your uh, family and uh, you have to work and you don't have time and resources then. So, uh, so it's, uh, it, it saves you time and also money. You won't have to spend money on tutors uh, later on. And uh, hopefully, uh, they will thank us later uh, for, for having learned this, this skill, um, as I thank my parents for all the early uh, uh, experience that I had as a child. And chances are your children will learn English one day. If you speak English, again, chances are they will know English, they will speak English uh, one day, and it won't feel awkward for you. It will help you establish connection with them easier whenever um, they're teenagers or even uh, later on. So it's not only a global, but also practical, and simply a beautiful language. So whenever those cab drivers or anybody else asks me about um, why, why you speak in English uh, with them, my immediate reaction always now is to uh, contra question, ask them a contra question and say, why not? Why would you not want to pass your English language skills if you know it and if you can do it? So today I really hope I inspired you enough to at least try. Thank you very much. Uh, I forgot to say thank you to my husband. I'm sorry, he was here supporting me and has supported me throughout this uh, amazing experience. Thank you very much to my husband.
Thank you.